DJ All right, now we're going to move into our base. And the base has a variety of different elements. I split my base into different layers and then stack them up. And each layer occupies a frequency range. So with base, a lot of times I use about three layers. And in this case, I have, let's start with the sub bass. So in the first breakdown of the track, I have this side chained sub bass patch. So let's just listen to that for a sec. Solo it. Now, if you're listening to this on laptop speakers or on shitty headphones, you probably won't even hear it. This is some pretty deep uh, bass, so if you can, listen to it on decent quality headphones or on speakers or a sub or something like that so you can actually hear what I'm doing. So let's double click on this. And I am running this. This is a sample. I use the same sub bass sample in every single track. Sub bass is basically, you know, it's a sine wave for the most part, and it's something that's felt more than heard. And so, a lot of times, when you find a good sub bass sample, um, my philosophy, anyways, is just stick with it. So, I have one that actually, this one was designed by uh, Miyagi, a uh, breakbeat producer, guy who runs Pop and Lock Records. He's been one of my music mentors for the last couple of years, and he designed this sub bass patch on the Arturia Mini Moog V and or mini moog 5 whatever it is and it's just a slam and sub bass patch so i have sampled it and i throw it into ableton's sampler here and i use it on all my tracks so we have the sub bass patch running in ableton's sampler and then right afterwards we have a limiter and the limiter is holding the sub bass at a nice even level because the challenge you'll find with a lot of sub bass patches is they get really boomy in certain frequency ranges if they're playing up and then they lose some impact down low so a limiter helps keep the sub bass nice and locked solid at a at a certain amplitude so as you can see we're getting just a bit of gain reduction here you don't want it totally slammed you just want a little bit of gain reduction so that it's keeping the sample nice and consistent again i'm using an eq8 and even on the sub bass I roll off on the bottom because otherwise I find the mix just gets muddy and exactly where you start rolling off will depend on the type of sample you're using and the style of music you're making. But as you can see right here as I'm rolling off the sub bass from 39 hertz downwards that's what I found gives it a nice sound in this track. And I'm taking the top end out not that there's much top end in the sample to begin with but I am EQing out any top end just to make sure that once it's compressed um, you know it's not coming through with any any top end noise. And then because this is a patch that I'm running, I want this pulsing, side chaining kind of sound. It's running only in the breakdowns of my tracks. It's not running in the main section. So I want the bass to pump, and I'm using a four on the floor kick drum sample side chained into this compressor to be able to create that pulsing sound. So here we can just take a look at the compression settings. So again, I'm using a really low, deep threshold, um, using just a little bit of attack, 75 millisecond decay or release on it, and it's giving the side chaining settings that I want. Next, we're going to move to the regular sub. So it's the same sample and the same instrument. I've basically duplicated this track, and this is just set up a little bit different because this sub bass patch is playing while the percussion's playing, and so I want to make sure that it's EQ'd a little differently. And also, I'm not using a side chaining compressor on it to the 4 4 kick. I'm actually side chaining this one to the breakbeat kick from the main percussion. That's an important difference, is because in, in house music, you know you're you're using that four on the floor kick and you can just side chain to the wherever you have your regular kick coming from in this case if i side chained this bass to the four four kick when it's coming in as a breakbeat kick basically it would sound odd so i'm having this one side chained in you can see the audio from select is beats main which is my my ableton instruments rack with the drum racks in it and i have it selected specifically i have it selected to the uh to the kick drum. If you go here you can see Beats Master Rack kicks and I'm selecting the bottom kick. So you select a specific sample. I'm selecting that big bottom kick and I'm selecting it pre-effects. 
So as well, you can see I'm using a limiter with the same settings on it. And the other important thing to see is I'm using really different EQ settings here. So again, I'm rolling off the bottom end from 37 hertz down. I'm rolling off the top end, but I've done a couple of different things here. You can see EQ2 is set at 60 hertz, and I've given it a little bump at 60 hertz. And then I've used EQ3 here, and I'm notching it out at 120 hertz. And the reason why I do that is because the kick and the sub bass are happening at the same time, I'm notching out a frequency range that the kick will fit in. So if you go to my kick, the kick is actually boosted a little bit at that frequency range so that it will punch through the sub bass. So I basically allow them to fit together like puzzle pieces, notching out one frequency, boosting at the same frequency in the other um, in the other track so that the kick and the bass fit really nicely together. So here is what our sub bass sounds like in the main area of the track. And it is basically playing the same pattern as the top baseline layers as well. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me.